Hello, dear students. I am Jocelyn Ayer. Today, I am before you to do poem Abraham Lincoln's letter to his son's teacher. Before going to the poem, let us know in brief about Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln was a lawyer and a statesman of America. He was the 16th president of America. Abraham Lincoln is widely known through his works. He was a great statesman. And uh, you know, through his work, Abraham Lincoln has uh, gained a lot of popularity in America and all around the world. He abolished slavery. He gave a new look to the economy of America. Okay, he paved way for the modern America what we see today. He is not only known because of these works, political works, but also is known for his literary works. He has written very, you know, some good essays. And one among his literary work is Abraham Lincoln's letter to his son's teacher. He writes this letter to his son's headmaster, your teacher refers to headmaster, before it you know, decides to send his son to the school. So generally when your parents pick a school, choose a school, they will have a lot of things in their mind. You know, I mean, today's parent, uh, they do not have many you know, expectations from school. They want the school only to teach their children in such a way that they get good marks. In fact, the best marks. And they, you know, so that they can, uh, you know, get a seat in uh, the college, get good marks there also, and get a good position. According to, you know, the present generation parent, the definition of success is working in a multinational company or in any big firm. So they send their children to school to gain a lot of knowledge from the books so that they can reach some multinational company or work in a big firm. Success is defined in this way by most of the present day parents. But Abraham Lincoln was not like that. He was not, he was not like a common parent at that time. His idea was completely different. He did not send his son to school so that his son would simply learn something what the teachers teach or something from the book. He did not want his son to, you know, work somewhere or to, to earn a lot of money because success means money nowadays, right? If you have a lot of money, you are defined as a successful person. But Abraham Lincoln was not like that. He wanted the school to inculcate among the children values values not marks because he knew that these values define his character and image in future so abraham lincoln is not like a present day parents he was completely practical in his approach in his thinking in his thoughts he wanted the school to teach a child you know many values such values which a child understands when he grows up such values which really make the child lead a proper and a meaningful and a successful life. Not like scoring the best marks, working in a big multinational company or somewhere, you know, and earning a lot of money and calling ourselves success is not Abraham Lincoln's, you know, view towards life. His vision was different. He wanted every single child to learn values. Because values define your character, value defines your life, value defines your success. So Abraham Lincoln's letter to his son's teacher is not simply just a poem. It is an epic, I can say. Though the poem contains only 60 lines, it can be compared to a Bible or a Quran or any holy book which teaches people good ideals. Even in this poem, entire poem, we are going to see such moral values what Abraham Lincoln wants. Not only son, every child, every single child should learn from the school. 
what are such values Abraham Lincoln has listed in his letter is what we are going to see. Remember one thing, Abraham Lincoln is not known because he was the 16th president of America, not known only because of his works as a, as a president, but also he is known through his literary works. Okay, so let us see in detail what Abraham Lincoln is trying to, you know, what values Abraham Lincoln is expecting the school to teach his son. In fact, every child, his son refers to here, all the children. What every child has to learn in the school is what Abraham Lincoln is trying to, you know, portray, show in this letter. He will have to learn, I know, that all men are not just, all men are not true. See, all men are not just. All men are not just, all men are not true. See, can you expect any present day parent asking the school or teacher or you know HM to teach their son this, their children this one, that all men are not just? You cannot expect that because every parent want their children to learn that all are good. Okay, because they want their children to learn only good things. But Abraham Lincoln's, I, I told you, Abraham Lincoln's view, vision was extremely different. He is requesting that teachers. Here, you know, one he, he does not refer to only one teacher because one, you cannot expect one teacher to teach, or teach all, I mean, all the subjects. He is requesting all the teachers. He, is, he, he requests to teach his son first that all men are not just, all men are not true. See what he says. But teach him also that for every scoundrel there is a hero, for every selfish politician there is a dedicated leader. Teach him for every enemy there is a friend. See, first eight lines convey the harsh reality of life. Abraham Lincoln says that, you know, life is uh, such an entity, such a thing which has both good and bad. You don't see only good people everywhere, you also see bad. Where there is good, there is evil, right? So Abraham Lincoln first wants his son to learn that there is evil in the world, bad in the world. All men are not just, all men are not true. You know why? Why doesn't he want his son to learn that all men are good first? Note the point. Abraham Lincoln doesn't want his son to learn first that all men are good. He wants his son to learn that all men are not good or not just. There is evil. You know why? Because if a teacher teaches a child, a newly you know, admitted child or a new boy, any child who, is, who, who starts learning, if a teacher teaches all men are good, he looks at everyone with this view that yes, all are good. And suppose if he sees any bad person, he will lose hope in the mankind, right? So, Abraham Lincoln says, first teach my son that all men are not good. And then immediately he says, teach him also that for every scoundrel there is a hero, for every selfish politician there is a dedicated leader, for every enemy there is a friend. See how nicely he says, for every scoundrel there is a hero, for every selfish politician there is a dedicated leader. For every enemy, there is a friend. The meaning of these first eight lines is very simple. Abraham Lincoln is trying to tell the teachers to teach his son harsh reality of life. That the world consists of good as well as evil. If there is a scoundrel, if there are scoundrels, there are also heroes. He says for every scoundrel, there is a hero. It means... The world is balanced with good and evil. For every scoundrel there is a hero, for every selfish politician there is a dedicated leader and for every enemy there is a friend. You know, he is trying to tell the teacher to teach his son both positive and negative aspects of life. He says, the world contains good people as well as bad people. This can be, you know, taken in a greater sense. 
Abraham Lincoln also means to, you know, say that every in every person there is good as well as evil. Are you able to catch the point here? So these lines can be taken in a broader sense. If you critically analysis, Abraham Lincoln is not just trying to tell that the world contains good and bad. He also tries to say that in every man there is good as well as evil. When a son understands this, only then he can move up or he can lead a life in a proper way. If he starts, you know, believing the fact that the world contains only good and suppose if he finds any bad or wrong things or evil, definitely his son would lose life, you know, sorry, lose hope in the mankind and humanity. So Abraham Lincoln wants the teachers in the school to first teach that there is evil, that is, there is bad and then teach that there is good. Quite simple, bad and good. So this is a harsh reality of life. Okay. So author is trying to tell here that every child should know that there is good as well as evil existing in the world. Okay. Fine. See what is trying to tell in the next few lines. It will take time, I know, but teach him if you can that a dollar earned is of far more value than five found. See, before introducing what next his son should learn in the school, Abraham Lincoln says, it will take time, I know. It will take time, I know. See, it will take time, I know. So these are, you know, these words are extremely important to understand that values cannot be immediately learned by anyone. Okay, see a small child cannot understand the value, whatever you see, for every scoundrel there is a hero, for every selfish politician there is a dedicated leader, he cannot understand these things. It will take time for him to understand. But the teachers have to teach. Author says, teaching is, sorry, Abraham Lincoln says, author is Abraham Lincoln, he says, teaching is not at all an easy task. He knows that being teacher is a great thing, but it is not very easy to be a teacher. He knows the problems of a teacher. He says, I know teacher, it's not very easy, but try to teach my son because values cannot be immediately understood and assimilated. It takes time. Only when you experience them, you'll understand. Yes, this is the, this is the thing. So Abraham Lincoln says, it will take time, I know. So, but he says, but teach him if you can, if you can see, again, if you can, it will take time, I know, if you can. These two, you know, lines very clearly defines that, you know, being teacher is not an easy task. Or teaching values to children is not an easy, not at all an easy task. But Abraham Lincoln is requesting, try if you can, that a dollar earned is of far more value than five found. This is one of the most important values to be learned by every child. A dollar earned is of far more value. A dollar earned is of far more value than five found. Abraham Lincoln is highlighting, you know, the importance of hard work and labor. He says hard earned money is very important. I mean, is, is a four, you know, far more value than the money given by someone else. I'll make it very clear. You know, Mahatma Gandhi ji, the father of our nation says, you can say that a nation has progressed only when you see two things. One, all children getting proper education. Okay. All children getting proper education. And second thing, when people start earning in a right manner. These are the feelings of Mahatma Gandhi. He says, when every person is educated and when every person starts earning in a earning money in a right manner. See, you can earn money in many ways. You can be corrupt, you, you can you know, rob the bank, you can loot the people. They are not right manners. You, the, the only right manner to earn the money is to work, do hard work, do labor and earn. Maybe it is mental labor or physical labor, doesn't matter. 
Gandhi ji says a nation can be defined as a progressed nation only when all get proper education and when all start earning in a proper way. The same quality is highlighted like here. Abraham Lincoln also says the same thing. Teach my son to earn money rather than stretch hand before someone for money. Because dollar earned is valuable than five found. Five found means money given by someone. Maybe your father's property, mother's property or the property given by someone. These are not the ways to get money. Money should be got only by hard work through your labor. Maybe mental labor or physical labor. Doesn't matter. Okay. Then see what next he likes to, you know, uh, he, what next Abraham Lincoln is expecting the school to teach his son. Teach him to learn to lose and also to enjoy winning. Again, a negative point is highlighted here. Teach him to learn to lose. Can you expect any parent to uh, come and tell your teacher, teacher, please teach my son how to lose. Can you expect this? I'm sure impossible, right? Because every parents want the school to teach their children only how to win, not to lose. But Abraham Lincoln is extremely practical, extremely, extremely practical. He says, teach my son to learn to lose and also to enjoy winning. You need to understand these two lines. See, failure is not an end. Failure is a stepping stone to success is what every child has to learn if he fails. You should not be taught only to win. Because when a child is taught only to win, suppose if he loses, he loses hope in everything. He loses hope in everything. So Abraham Lincoln tries to tell the teacher that they need to teach the child that success and failure are the two faces of the same coin. Two faces of the same coin and failure is not an end. It is a fresh beginning. Teachers have to make the children understand that failure is a lesson, is an experience. It is a stepping stone to success. See, I'll make one thing clear. Abraham Lincoln is the best example for failure. Or he can be the best example for failure is a stepping stone to success. He, you know, tried several things to uh, show, I mean, uh, prove himself to be a successful man. But he failed drastically in every attempt he made. But finally, in the year 1861, he became the 16th president. He was more than 50 at the time. He tried to prove that he is a good example for success. But in many, in many attempts he failed. He failed and failed and failed and failed and finally he reached the topmost position. That is he became the president, the first citizen of America. And he gave a new shape to the economic structure of America. And a modern America is the gift of Abraham Lincoln's thoughts. That is why today if you go to America, I am damn sure you will find the statue of Abraham Lincoln in every city. Like how we see the statue of Mahatma Gandhi in our country like that, you will see the statue of Abraham Lincoln, you know, existing everywhere in America because of his ideologies, thinking, view. Okay, he believed immensely, greatly that yes, failure is a stepping stone to success, not an end. Most of us think if we fail, for finished, our life is over, our attempts are over. No. Failure is an option to make an another attempt. What the point? So failure is not an end. Failure is a lesson. Failure is always a stepping stone. That is what Abraham Lincoln wants the school to teach his son. What next? Steer him away from envy if you can. Teach him the secret of quiet lawfare. Steer him away from envy. Envy means jealousy. Jealousness. You know, there is a saying, jealous doesn't wait for reason. For example, if you see a boy or a girl who is much better than you or if he is, uh, uh, you know, better looking or if he is more brilliant than you, obviously, you feel jealous on him, right? So jealous doesn't wait for any reason. And Abraham Lincoln here says, 
my son should stay away from and we should not be jealous on anybody's achievements he should never be jealous on anyone he should always treat everyone as a friend he should not have this jealousy he should appreciate the achievements of others rather than feeling jealousy about it and also he says teach him the secret of quiet laughter this is this has a very deeper meaning dear boys and girls see quiet laughter when you are you know upset when you are disappointed when you are unhappy is it possible to express smile on your face you may think it is not possible it is possible it needs a practice because you should first know that life is a combination of good and bad happiness and sorrow when you accept happiness you should also accept sorrow so author says subdan mink and says is a son or any person should not express his sorrow because the world doesn't expect your sorrows it expects only your smiles this is what every child has to learn when he is in school okay abraham nikan says my son should never express his sorrow he should always express smile though he has sorrows he has to hide them and show the smiling face how beautiful you know abraham lincoln's uh, thoughts are so these are you know these thoughts doesn't come to common people like us because when we send out when we send out see myself have a son studying in eighth standard and i one more son studying in fourth standard i also expect uh, the teachers to teach them good i mean uh, you know, you know sir, uh, teach in such a way that they get 85% 90% no what a parent should expect from the school is to teach their children values these values see dollar earned is valuable than five pound scoundrel there is a hero and now he says failure is a stepping stone to success and he is also expect he is requesting the teachers to teach his son to hide his grief and to express a smile how beautiful dear students it's not easy task it is not easy for anyone to show smile on the face when he is upset but he can do it only when he practices them okay dear students this is the end of part 1 i will do more lines in the next parts in total there are 60 lines and you know out of 60 i have done only 15 you please read these 15 lines again and again try to understand the values you know abraham lincoln as uh, you know written in the letter to his son's teacher it is a it is i mean these values are to be learned by each and every person in fact students so now you being students if you learn these values and if you implement them as you grow up i'm damn sure you can see a lot of changes in your lifestyle you will grow up to become a fine citizen of this country abram lincoln in fact wants everyone to grow in such a way that everyone thinks about the progress of his country and progress of the country depends on the progress of yourselves so if every person progresses automatically the country will also progress and uh, progressing is not an easy task every you know we people think of only uh, you know earning money and leading a life a luxurious life that is uh, you know we define progress or you know success but abram lincoln is not of uh, this uh, thought he wants any common man to live with the values without values you cannot call yourself completely progressed so a progressed man is nothing but a progressed nation so dear students read these lines again and again and again and again and try to be thorough understand these values and implement in your life we'll meet in the next part soon thank you